Hey, I'm in the middle of editing one of my many how-to videos and I wanted to share the process. A how-to video is a great starter project in video production because it's a simple matter of telling a simple story with your A-roll and matching B-roll to it. So as you get in the habit of doing that, um, you should get better. Also, how-to videos are great because they get the most views on YouTube often, and so you could get them monetized and get a lot of money from that. So here are some I've done in the past, and they vary a little bit as to when I come up with the A-roll and when I find the B-roll. So with the Feeding the Ducks um, series, I basically wrote down a list of my Feeding the Ducks tips, and then I recorded my A-roll. Then I knew what my A-roll needed to be, so I had to gather shots for B-roll to match with it. I also referred back to some shots that I had already taken of my husband getting bit by geese. Another how-to series I did was the iPhone, how to fix an iPhone screen. I actually lived through this and then thought, you know what? I should get a recording of this. So I got a recording of me doing part of it with my phone screen broken. And then as I went to go get it fixed, I got a recording of doing it. So I can't remember really at which time I wrote down the steps, somewhere maybe in the middle of the process. And in this video, you can see I kind of acted out me dropping the phone and then intervened with my intro of, how do you fix this? I don't want to have to replace my new phone, um, my, my phone, phone, but anyway. Then, as I explain the steps, I put B-roll over the explanation of the steps. So you do that in most how-tos. Um, here's the transfer word art one. So with that one, I actually explained the steps as I shot the B-roll. So I just tried to explain it as I was doing it. So you see there's not much on the video two layer because I'm giving the explanation throughout. But I do cut in with shots like this. Um, where you can see close-ups of what I'm doing. So um, now I'm currently working on a prayer board B-roll. This was a long project. It took about a week to put together. I did it over spring break. And what the way I did this is I shot it as I was going along. And then I went through and took all the shots and put them in order from what shots I would want to use. After I had the shots lined up in order, I wrote down my A-roll, my list of what steps to do, so that my A-roll would easily match my B-roll and I could glaze over areas like the painting, which I didn't get in the shot. So I just mention painting real quick and move on. Now, if I had had a shot of painting, then I might explain how you gotta make sure the strokes go the same way and all that. Um, so that's a nice way to do it. If you have a lot of shots, just line your shots up in the order that you would need to tell the story, then write the story. And so that's what I did for that. So now what I'm doing is I recorded my A-roll, and then I cut and edited my A-roll, and now I'm adding in my B-roll. So here's my intro where I'm explaining the project. Uh-oh. I'll reuse that shot. It's the exact same shot. That's annoying. Um, and here's where I start explaining the steps. And as you can see, I have B-roll over it. I started by gathering my materials and laying them out to see how they would work together. Then I had to construct the frame, sanding, sawing, painting, and nailing together, which includes carefully measuring. So you, you heard I said painting and nailing together. I didn't have shots of that, so I tried to glaze by it in one sentence because I had to include it, but I wasn't going to elaborate because I didn't have shots to go with it. You'll also notice that I want the audio of my sawing and nailing together. It makes the thing interesting, but I don't want it conflicting with my voice. So I have to lower the levels on it. And you can see if you mute this track, these, they're getting up to 12. Okay. But if I mute this one and go to this one, this one, painting, painting and nailing together, it's getting up to three. So you want at least 10 decibels of self separation from your background audio and your foreground audio so that people can distinctly hear them each. And if I wanted to be a perfectionist, I would probably go in and put effects transitions in here where the audio will fade in and out. So let's just go to video. Nope, it's an audio transition. 
crossfade and I will just crossfade these and then I can adjust how long or short the crossfade is so that they fade in and out. You heard my daughter whining there. I'm going to have to adjust that audio a bit too. Construct the frame. Sanding some. Oh, I muted it. Construct the frame. Sanding, sawing, painting, and nailing together, which includes carefully measuring here. Okay. Okay. After that, I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. Okay. So that's a lot of wait time. So I'm going to move that a little over. And you can split up your narration so that you get a little time to see what you're doing. Fully measuring. But I'd say that's enough. So trim it down. I'm going to move all this over. The way to move all of this over is to just move it like that. And what else do we have? After that, I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. Okay, so as you can see on my A-roll, I recorded it on video. I could have recorded it straight into an audio program if I didn't want to use video, but I was going to use the intro and the extra. Um, I'm reading though, so I have to cover that up. I don't want people seeing me read on camera. So I plan to cover up all the A-roll with the steps. After that, I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. And since I wrote the A-roll after gathering the B-roll, all of the B-roll is lined up back here. And I just pick whatever goes with it and use it there. I think I had a shot of me laying it all out, but once I cho chose the best shots, that wasn't in there, so this is the best that I have. So I'm just going to drag these because these are my next pieces up here. And you can see I'm not letting them touch the other layer of video. Right now they're below it, so I'll have to pull it on top. Um, I've adjusted this to where I can have more of a big timeline with media over here. Now that I've pulled all the media, I don't need to look at the media anymore. To lay out the board face. Okay, and you see now I can pull this up over here so it's on top. That, I need to lay out the board face. Okay, so I'm just adjusting to where the actual activity After comes faster. That, I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. Then okay, and you can see that sometimes I take longer to line stuff up than I said. So how about, I was showing myself the parts here, but I don't need to see that. How about I cut it right here? And now I'm going to use the rate stretch tool to make all of that It'll go faster, so I'll have to drop the audio on that, but I'm not doing anything that's sound worthy like sawing or sanding. So I'm going to get the rate stretch tool, which is B, and just drag it to where it's going faster so that I show more of my stuff. After that, I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. Then I start attaching the parts. Wait a second. I can even trim that shorter because I'm going to attach the parts. I need to lay out the board face down and line everything up. Then I start attaching the parts. Okay, so the shot of me attaching the parts. So that's how it goes. I lined up all the shots I was going to use. I wrote the A-roll and now I just trim the shots to fit. I just need to get a shot of me. Okay, this is where I start attaching the parts. So I'm just going to trim that back here. Move this up. So it's a nice way to do it if you have a lot of shots and you aren't exactly sure what you're going to need. Um, there's some good audio here. You can see by the hump. So I may want to get the sound of me drilling. But, of course, I'm going to want to drop it. Line everything up. Then I start attaching the parts. For metal, there are screws. For chicken wire, a staple gun. For the paper holder. Okay, for metal, there are screws. Let's see if I got the staple gun lined up next. Okay, that's all about the screws. Is this the chicken wire? 
staple gun. Okay, and if I like more of my B-roll, I can move the A-roll. So let's just take this so I can move everything from this point on back. Sometimes it selects more than I want it to, but give me a little bit more space to work with. Staple gun. Wait a second, let's see. Okay, so I guess we could just... Do I like the two shot, or do I just want to go with the screw shot? Whoops, I overlapped a little bit. Okay. There are screws for chicken wire, a staple gun. And it really just needs to be that short of a shot. There doesn't need to be that much to it. I can extend it and have the rate stretch tool throughout. But then the problem with that is uh, the sound gets distorted because it speeds up and gets a higher pitch. Um, I'm looking for the chicken wire. should be right here. I have hammers. There's my chicken wire. So you see I have it lined up to match the A-roll. Now I just got to line it up. I'm not going to make you watch me do it. But that's the process. I lined up the B-roll, recorded the A-roll, edited it to where all my repeats were out. It was short and concise. And now I'm moving the B-roll to match the A-roll.